Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is a build overview of the uranium enrichment plant that I showcased two to three weeks ago. I have expanded the entire build by connecting it to a fully functional nuclear power plant which is once again built in a 9 chunk area, making the total build go up to 18 chunks. Now in this example, I have used the modular nuclear reactor. However, you can automate in a similar fashion the Watts power plant or even the Zernox reactor. However, the modular ones are pretty easy to automate. Now I will provide a world download in the description below. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. We start with the large mining drill sitting on top of a bedrock ore deposit. This drill serves as an infinite source for uranium bedrock ore. Through these conveyor belts, the bedrock ore travels into the sets of centrifuges and ore acidizers where it gets refined and each piece gets converted into total two stacks of uranium powder. All of that uranium powder is then stored in this buffer crate and this crate is also important as it serves as a control mechanism to supply power to the large mining drill. Now from this crate, the uranium powder travels into these 15 silexes on both the sides. Now in the silex, the uranium powder is converted into uranium 238 and 235. Now the output of all of these silexes are connected. So from there, we have total two products. One of them is uranium 238, which is converted into billets. And the second one being 235, which is once again converted into billets, finally making uranium fuel billets in this automatic crafting table. Now those fuel billets are also combined to make ingots of uranium fuel, which is then stored in the mass storage unit. Now let's talk a little bit about balancing. So this setup will give you 12 ingots of uranium fuel every 36 seconds. So that's one ingot produced every three seconds. Now we have total three size five nuclear reactors. Each reactor will consume four ingots of uranium fuel every 36 seconds. So that's a consumption of total 12 ingots per 36 seconds. That's why this build is kind of balanced. Now, as I told you, this crate which stores the uranium powder will also serve as a control mechanism as it gives out a comparator signal which is set to the subtract mode. We have a signal of 13 going in on this side. So as soon as the level of uranium powder falls below a certain limit, then this redstone torch will shut off which will allow the connection, the power connection to the large mining grid to be turned on. Another balance has to be done with the uranium 238 because it is produced in like more quantity, a lot more compared to uranium 235. So as soon as the grid is full, then it will signal the torch, which will enable the uranium 238 billets to fall into this pool of sulfuric acid. Now these ingots of uranium fuel are then taken into the fuel inserter for the nuclear reactor and they are stored in the smallest mass storage unit available. Now the nuclear reactor has a loop of water and coolant. And here we have the depleted uranium, which is being brought out by the another port. So that's what the crates are for. Steam then goes into these three turbines, which I have split it into two parts. But for real, you can just split it into how many parts you ever want to. And it total, it produces five mega Gs per second. So yeah, that is kind of enough to sustain because this part right here, it consumes roughly 4.2 mega Hs per second and the centrifuges and the industrial mixer, they are not going to consume that much. So I think this is a self-sustainable setup. Next for the coolant, I have showcased this before. For this, I am using thermal expansion. We are producing cobblestone, which then get pulverized into sand. Sand is then converted into sandstone using the cyclic assembler and the sandstone is then again funneled into another pulverizer which as byproduct will give nitre. Now nitre is the main product here but as it is the secondary product to increase the amount of nitre that we are getting I have used the secondary sieve upgrade along with all of the higher upgrades as well. So the nitre ends up in the industrial mixer and it gives an infinite amount of coolant. So that's how we are producing coolant for this entire setup. And here, yeah, as I told you this, these crates right here, they will serve as an output for all of the depleted uranium fuel, which through the pipes will once again travel into the spent fuel pool drum. 
Now I have placed hoppers on top cause apparently the item ducts don't directly connect for some reason but the output well it does connect so all of the pen fuel pull drums have their outputs combined into a single line here is the buffer for the depleted fuel going into four centrifuges and finally we have total four outputs nuclear waste radium plutonium and reactor grade plutonium ingots so yeah looks like i kind of made a filter mistake here but yeah basically that was the entire build so yeah as i told you you can repeat this process with like other reactors as well and i'm going to try to make this entire setup in 1.12.2 using nuclear tech mod extended as there is a chance that in the future updates the modular reactor is gonna get removed from the 1710 version so yeah let me know what you think of this build and i hope you guys enjoyed this video peace out and stay safe